Hi, I'm Snegdha Sharma and you're listening to Three Things, the Indian Express news show. On Saturday afternoon, the Chief Minister of Gujarat, Vijay Rupani, visited the governor of the state and tendered his resignation. When asked about this sudden decision, Rupani said that it was a natural process in his party, the BJP. I am very proud of the Bharatiya Party of Bharatiya Janata Party. I am very proud of the Bharatiya Party of Bharatiya Janata Party. I am very proud of the Bharatiya Party of Bharatiya Party. महत्वपूर्ण जिम्मेदारी दी और मुख्यमंत्री के रूप में मिले इस दायित्व को अच्छी तरह से निभाते हुए मेरे कार्यकाल के दौरान माननीय प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र भाई मोदी जी का विशेष मार्गदर्शन मिलता रहा है माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के नेतृत्व एवं मार्गदर्शन में गुजरात समग्र विकास तथा सर्वजन कल्याण के पथ पर आगे बढ़ते हुए नए आयामों को छुआ है विजय रूपानी इक्वेटेड चीफ मिनिस्टरशिप टू रिले रेस एंड सेड दैट एवरीबडी रन एंड मूव्स अहेड एंड ही हैड हैड दैट रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ रनिंग फॉर फाइव इयर्स एंड नाउ ही विल गिव द फ्लैग टू समन एल्स विद द असेंबली इलेक्शन इन द स्टेट जस्ट अ यूर अवे इन डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी This announcement signifies the changing contours of power not only in Gujarat BJP but in the party as a whole. What makes it even more evident is that this is the third BJP chief minister to be changed in the country within a span of the last 2 months. So to find out more about this resignation we spoke to Parimal Dabi who reports for the Indian Express from Gujarat. So first of all Parimal uh, tell us did this resignation really come as a complete surprise? not really i mean yes the timing and the manner in which it was tendered to the governor that surprised betty but otherwise there was not exactly as an element of surprise in this resignation as the, this political circles here in gandhinagar and ahmedabad they were quite abuzz about talks of a leadership change in the state government for long now especially after the second wave of covid-19 there was a lot of criticism the government was facing so the party organizations leaders from the organizations they were quite regularly informing the media persons here that a leadership change is in offer very shortly and even yesterday when we were talking to some leaders at the party headquarters they were saying that they are certainly not surprised by the resignation and they said that in fact it has come 15 days late so not as complete surprise as such like that so he was attending a partidar community function on the outskirts of gandhinagar and uh, the function was virtually addressed by the prime minister modi himself and cm rupani and all his cabinet ministers were present in the function so generally what uh, rupani does is he addresses the media after attending some such uh, public function but yesterday he did not interact with media persons and he walked away and then within a couple of hours there was a message from the information department to media persons that the cm is going to meet the governor at rajbhavan and after tendering his resignation to the governor the cm addressed the media and while addressing the media he said that he has tendered the resignation as per a decision taken by the party which is taken in the larger interest of the state of gujarat so there was some surprise in the manner in which he tendered the resignation otherwise it was always in the talks of political circles here right and uh, can you tell us what he said exactly in this resignation letter yeah so he has uh, given his resignation letter in hindi to governor acharya devavrat mainly he has shown gratitude towards the party towards the people of gujarat towards prime minister modi party president jp nadda and especially union home and the cooperation minister amit shah he has uh, said that he is a worker of the party and he is very thankful to the party that they entrusted the responsibility of Gujarat government chief minister's post he has uh, also said that he thinks that now there is a need of change of uh, leadership in Gujarat and that the progress of Gujarat should be done and under new leadership under the guidance of prime minister modi so yeah mainly these are the points that he has mentioned in the resignation letter 
Right. So, Paramal, the new chief minister has finally been announced and uh, his name is Bhupendra Patel. He is a first-time MLA from Gujarat. Uh, can you tell us what else do we know about him? Patel's name was proposed by Vijay Rupani himself in the meeting. That was also attended by two observers sent by the central leadership of the party, Narendra Singh Tomar and Prahlad Joshi. Patel's name was then seconded by the outgoing Deputy Chief Minister Nitin Patel, followed by all the other elected members of the party. Bhupendra Patel is Kadwa Patidar from Ahmedabad city itself. He is elected from the Ghatloria Assembly constituency and is considered very close to former Chief Minister of Gujarat and current Governor of Uttar Pradesh, Anandipan Patel. He has also held positions such as President of the Memnagar Nagar Palika, Standing Committee Chairman of Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation and Chairman of the Ahmedabad Urban Development Authority. Right. And uh, Parimal, finally, if you could uh, briefly take us through the highs and lows of uh, Vijay Rupani's uh, leadership in Gujarat. Yeah, Vijay Rupani is very widely considered as a very sensitive chief minister that Gujarat has ever got so far. Political plank of his governance had always been Sambedan Shirta and Nirnayakta. So he's always, I mean, I was talking to some bureaucrats also. They are saying that PM Rupani would be humble chief minister who was always accessible, always approachable by people for whatever issues they face. So in a way, that can be considered as one of the high points of his leadership as Gujarat chief minister. And yes, the other part of his governance, I mean, in 2017, there were massive floods in North Gujarat. So in 2007, Rupani had camped in the North Gujarat district of the Nastapa for five days. And he had run, I mean, he virtually the entire chief minister's office from Banaskatha. So that can also be taken as one of the high points of his governance as chief minister of Gujarat. Low points, the Rupani government faced a lot of criticism for the handling of the COVID-19, I mean, especially the second wave, the, the, the figures that the government was giving of, of COVID patients and the mortality, they were always under cloud. And in fact, the Gujarat High Court had taken so much of cognizance of the situation of COVID-19 in the state. And the court also passed some scathing strictures against the state government. It is believed that the handling of COVID-19 in the state uh, by the Rupani government has cost Rupani his top post. And the other low point of his governance could be the cyclone Taute that hit the state in May. So cyclone Taute, it caused massive loss to the infrastructure in the state and also loss to the lives also. And there are wide scale allegations of unfair distribution of compensation to the affected people. So that is also can be considered as one of the low points of Rupani government. Back in 2016, in what was seen as a deft political move by the then BJP President Amit Shah, just one year ahead of the then Assembly elections, Vijay Rupani had replaced the then Chief Minister Anandi Ben Patel, who had taken charge as the Chief Minister when Narendra Modi was appointed as the Prime Minister for the first time in 2014. Now, Liz Matthew, who covers all news related to the BJP for the Indian Express, in her recent report said that the parallel between Vijay Rupani and Anandi Ben's exit could not have been more striking and even ironic. So, to talk about it and also what this change in Gujarat indicates about the party's central leadership, Liz joined the show. So, Liz, in your recent piece about uh, Rupani's resignation, uh, you said that the similarities between his exit and that of former Chief Minister Anandi Ben were pretty striking. Can you tell us more about this? Yeah, the similarities were on timing because Vijay Rupani's predecessor, Anandi Ben Patel, who had taken over from then Chief Minister Narendra Modi, who became the Prime Minister later, in August 2016, just ahead of the 2017 election, the Assembly election. The reasons were mainly due to the internal issues and she could not handle the Patel agitation properly. And obviously, Anandi Ben Patel, who had taken over from Narendra Modi, could not match his stature or image. The party was still in the shadow of Modi's image. Then Pani became chief minister after Anandi Ben Patel had resigned. He continued to be the chief minister after the 2017 December elections. 
here in Jerupani's issue also, the elections are going to be in December 2022, like almost more than a year is left. So Jerupani had to give way to a new CM now. Here again, there was this lot of internal uh, issues in the Gujarat BJP. When Anandi Ben resigned, it was widely believed that uh, Nitin Patel, another Patel would become the chief minister. But in the last minute, some political intervention from the center happened. And Vijay Rupani, who is considered to be very close to current Home Minister Amit Shah, Rupani is also a Jain, he became the chief minister. So uh, Vijay Rupani, again, like uh, Anandiben Patel, still had some kind of a status. Vijay Rupani was considered to be a bit law profile, but still he had very good contacts and connections with uh, Amit Shah and section of BJP leaders in the state. Then he continued to be the chief minister after the 2017 election. Currently, now, again, Vijay Rubani had to quit. The alibi they are giving is that his failure as a chief minister in uh, handling the COVID pandemic. And also, you know, the Patel community is a very influencing community, which has been demanding that there has to be a Patidar who has to be the CM again. So Vijay Rubani, like I said, he's not a Patel. So, you know, in the party, Vijay Rupani's failure as to emerge as a strong leader or to have a tall personality as a chief minister, he failed in that. Like I mentioned, the party is still in the control of Modi and Shah and also in the shadow of Prime Minister Modi's image. There is this lot of inside talk in the party that we go with Vijay Rupani as the chief minister. He's not uh, somebody who can actually claim or gain the support of Gujarat community and even the influencing caste and the groups were not very, even those supporters of BJP were not very happy with Vijay Rupani. So the similarities are the timing and the Patel factor. Anandi Patel was a Patel, Patida, but Vijay Rupani is a Jain. So we have to see whether the party is going to elect a Patida as uh, demanded by the community. We have to see that. Then the other issue here is that that time, Amit Shah had his say in the last minute. But this time, Amit Shah's man is, has been asked to go in the same way like Anandiban Patel had to go. These are the two major similarities here. Right. And also, Liz, uh, Vijay Rupani is the third BJP chief minister who has resigned in the last two months. Uh, so what do these changes uh, really indicate about the party's central leadership? What is going on? See, this is another bad turn of their way of handling state issues and the internal party issues have changed. That is a very glaring difference we can see. Earlier, like during the first tenure of Prime Minister Modi's time, when uh, after Modi and Shah had taken over the party reign, like 2014 to 2019, if you see that there were so many demands from the state units to remove or replace the, the then chief ministers with another leader, maybe another leader who is the favorite of another faction. It happened in Haryana, it happened in Jharkhand, it happened in uh, Rajasthan. But the party never paid any heed to those demands. And in Jharkhand, the demand was like very stark and the all kinds of surveys ahead of the last election, everything suggested that the chief minister and the party, if it had gone with the same chief minister, they would not be able to return to power. But still the party refused to do that because BJP's stand used to be like, we have taken a decision, we don't want to change that. If you are changing the leader, it means that the party doesn't have faith in him. That means the people also will not have faith in the leader. This was there. But in July, we know that the party had, the central leadership had changed the chief minister of uh, Karnataka, who again was under the pressures from within the party circles more than from the outsiders or uh, other opposition parties. His performance was never rated as bad, but it was the internal issue. But again, with the party had an alibi that he had crossed 75, an age which the party had decided to be the upper limit for the leaders who are occupying the high post. Then they changed Kirat Singh Rawat in Uttarakhand. Again, after four, uh, he had taken over as the CM from Trivendra Singh Rawat only in March. But in July, the party had changed him and uh, they had appointed a new chief minister. And uh, Vijay Rupani's uh, resignation was the third one. In these two occasions, the party had asked the chief ministers to put in their papers, citing whatever reason. This, in a way, shows that the discipline in the BJP, we know that this kind of similar demands were in the Congress also. 
in fallbound punjab and also in chatisgarh but we have seen the kind of pulls and pushes happening but even the central leadership could not do much and there is no change in the chief ministers despite the intense pressure within from within the party as far as bjp's current leadership is concerned it is a major step that they have indicating that they are ready to change and they would make it like more than 6 months ahead of it so that the new cm would have some time to introduce himself and his governance style to the people so that they can go for the election with the same face as the cm fundamentally they always believe that changing cm means we don't have faith the people don't have which means we are asking people also not to have faith that approach the party has changed right and uh, you also said that there were some key developments within the party that were already pointing towards this uh, you know upcoming change uh, can you tell us about them as well you know rupani was considered to be shah's man and shah was in a way calling shots in the gujarat bjp and uh, like everybody in gujarat bjp would agree that the kind of effort and hard work amit shah had put in to bring up bjp as the party and the most dominant political force in the state of course prime minister modi who was the chief minister he had his image and his uh, governance style everything was the primary thing but it was always accompanied with shah's effort and his micro management in the state unit so shah had put in his man because shah had lot of differences with uh, anandi ben patel the party insiders used to say they couldn't see you know eye to eye that kind of animosity was apparently there between the two then uh, it was considered as shah's victory and nitin patel's stance was uh, curtailed and nitin patel was dropped and uh, appointed rupani but if you look at in the recent developments in the bjp we have been seeing like one after another the current state party chief sia party he is considered to be very very close to mr modi but he never had a very comfortable or very good relationship with mr amit shah then after he became the party president replacing jitu bagani who is considered to be very close to or a kind of sharp protege party started making major changes in the state unit he had replaced biku bai dalsania who had worked with shah with ratnagar who again apparently do not have that kind of a good ties with amit shah then we have seen when during the cabinet expansion mr modi elevated two ministers from gujarat one was mansukh mandavia the other one was parshottam rupala as cabinet ministers both are considered to be very close to mr modi rather than to shah again in the first week of september the gujarat state units executive happened and uh, very surprisingly it was addressed by defense minister radna singh instead of amit shah this had triggered lot of talks in the bjp power corridors that was again seen as shah's distancing or like from the state unit developments or uh, the gujarat bjp units functioning the senior leaders when you ask they say that shah is the home minister he doesn't have the time he has so many issues to handle internal security is a very crucial uh, business to deal with so he doesn't have that much time to deal with gujarat unit one also shah is also involved in the party's national affairs like he has a key role even if jp nadda has become the president he plays crucial role in decision making of the party so that is the reason that he is keeping away from or kept away from the gujarat party's functioning we don't know the whether it is going to be a permanent or whether it is going to be like this but in the recent past and the current developments indicate that there is a deliberate attempt from the party to keep gujarat unit business with people who are very close to mr modi the party leaders indicated that now shah's responsibility in the gujarat unit will be shared with his bl santosh who's the very influencing organization general secretary national level mansukh mandavia again hand picked by modi to be the union health minister nadda ji and party president jp nadda and sia patil again chosen by modi to be the chief of gujarat unit and the new cm also will have so the party unit which was in a way uh, handled solely by uh, mr ramesha is now being handed over to a group of party leaders most of them are close to mr modi
In May 2020, as the country was grappling with the first wave of the COVID pandemic, Dhawal Patel, an editor of a Gujarat news web portal called Face of the Nation, wrote an article talking about a possible change in leadership in Gujarat. And not long after, Patel was slapped with a sedition charge and he spent 14 days in judicial custody before he got bail. So on Saturday, when Patel heard of the change in leadership in Gujarat, he obviously had some things to say. And to find out what, we spoke to Shohini Ghosh, who wrote a report based on a conversation with Patel. So Shohini, can you begin by telling us about this uh, contentious article uh, written by Dhawal Patel on Face of the Nation? Uh, What did he really say in it? So Dhawal Patel is a journalist and he runs a web portal back in 2020 May. He was running the portal solely. So we had put up this article saying that Mansuk Mandavia, who was then the Union Minister of Chemicals and Fertilizers, that he has been called by the party high command in Delhi and discussions are ongoing for a change of guard in Gujarat. The CM of Gujarat might see a change. It was a overall a very speculative article. No concrete evidence based report and the state government had taken an objection to this which was odd because face of nation the web portal that he runs was did not have a high circulation or high click numbers so taking note of an obscure portal that in itself was odd but at the same time Mansuk Mandavia the same day had also issued a rejoinder of sorts denying that this is completely false and speculative and CM Rupani is already putting up a successful fight for COVID. Right. So showing his sedition is a very serious charge. Can you tell us on what basis was it slapped on him and also what happened to him afterwards? Well, as per the FIR, if we go by the statement as recorded in the complaint, The complaint says that his article was aimed at causing disaffection in the society against the state and it was speculative and hence it falls under the category of sedition. This is what the state had mentioned in the FIR. But of course, as the court also subsequently noted, be it during the bail or during quashing application before the Gujarat High Court that the basic ingredients of sedition prima facie it's not being fulfilled. That was one of the key reasons on the key ground of when he was given bail. So this was the state's stand over there. Anyway the FIR was registered on May 11th so basically the report came out on May 7th 2020, the FIR was registered on May 11th. He was detained and then arrested by May 13th. And he was sent to judicial custody from May 14th until May 27th, the day when he got bail. So officially, the court records show he got bail on May 27th, but he was released from the jail on May 28th. So that is the broad timeline of what went down with him. Eventually, after bail, he applied to get the FIR quashed before the Gujarat High Court. And without going into the merits of the issue, eventually, he submitted an unconditional apology. And based on that, the FIR was quashed and not particularly on the basis of merits. So that has been the broad development. Following quashing of the FIR, which happened in November 2020, he says that he left the country and he doesn't plan to come back here. And uh, finally, Shohini, can you tell us about uh, your conversation with uh, Mr. Patel uh, about Rupani's exit? What did he have to say? So basically, when the Indian Express got in touch with him, first thing that he mentioned was that this was bound to happen. It was the inner circle of BJP was already apparently, this is of course his version of things and there's no way to verify it. 
but the bjp inner circle in the state who are already looking to replace chief minister vijay rupani for quite some time but owing to covid especially the second wave onslaught that we saw subsequently the plan was postponed at the party level so at some level based on our conversation with him it was quite apparent that this was a vindication for what he had to face what he went through but at the same time he also made this point and i think this is a point that is being made quite a lot that is the sedition charges were slapped as a tool to intimidate other journalists because this happened in may 2020 and back then gujarat was specifically facing a pretty severe first wave and of course that was getting a lot of bad press and not only the press the court was also taking cognizance of it and they were not making any bones about pulling the state up so these were some points that he mentioned and on a very practical note he also mentioned this that his decision to leave the country was partly driven by this sedition charge that he had to face because his point was if i continue staying here or in gujarat the next step could be they could be booking me under pasa pasa is prevention of anti social activities act under which you can also be externed from a state or multiple fias can lead you to be declared as an anti social element which comes with certain set of restrictions so that was one of the key decision that he said was that drove him to move out of the country he continues to run face of nation but he now has a team something he did not have back then he has a team that's based in gujarat and he too continues to contribute to his portal you were listening to three things by the indian express Today's show was written and produced by me Snigdha Sharma and was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar. You can follow us and leave us feedback on Facebook or Twitter at Express Podcasts or send us an email at podcasts@indianexpress.com. At and if you like the show, please do subscribe and leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts from so more people can find us. You can also look for us in the audio section in the top right corner of our website indianexpress.com. 